right now the world is on the brink of a global crisis, and it's because of the breakdown of a deal between Russia and Ukraine over grain. In the middle of a fierce war, a disagreement over something like grain may seem minor, but the collapse of this deal has the potential to destabilise the global food market which could have catastrophic consequences for countries around the world. You know, the kind of the really bad scenarios are you're going to see significant starvation in, in developing countries. We know that when there is famine, that leads to a number of human rights abuses. We could see collapse of states. It is frightening for people who follow it closely. So what exactly is this deal about? Why is Ukraine so important to the global food supply? Why did Russia pull out of the deal? And is there any chance that the deal can be salvaged? Let's start with the deal itself. When Russia first invaded Ukraine, its navy trapped 20 million tonnes of Ukrainian grain that was on its way to countries around the world. This caused an explosion in world food prices. And by July, the United Nations and Turkey had come together to convince Russia to allow Ukrainian food exports to pass through the Black Sea. Fast forward a year, and Russia has now pulled out of the deal and is threatening to attack ships that continue to carry Ukrainian food exports. Now, the reason why all of this had such a massive impact on the global food market is because... Ukraine is, is, is a breadbasket for the world. What that means is Ukraine is one of the world's biggest producers and exporters of grain, a staple and a building block of a lot of the world's most important foods. And we're not just talking about wheat here, but other crucial grain-related products like maize, which is also a key part in feeding livestock. Just as important as what Ukraine produces is who it produces it for. And this brings us to a key part of this story, food security. Food security is defined as the state of having sufficient, safe and nutritious food available for everybody. A number of the countries that rely on Ukraine are places that struggle with food insecurity, which is basically a lack of this. Today we have over 800 million people in the world who are food insecure. And they don't know where their next meal will come from. According to the World Food Programme, one of the leading organisations trying to combat global hunger, of that 800 million people, almost half are what we call acutely food insecure. So this is a situation where people are on the verge of starvation. It's an extreme level of hunger. That number has dramatically risen since the beginning of the pandemic. Aside from governments experiencing economic issues, the two big drivers of this rise are climate change and conflicts and war, like the war in Ukraine. The EU says that while the deal was in place, Ukraine supplied the WFP with more than 80% of all of its grain, which was then sent as humanitarian aid to countries in need. 100% of all Somalis use wheat. We pray to God for peace in Ukraine and everywhere. Let all wars stop. Even if Ukraine wasn't providing food to some of the world's most vulnerable countries, it would still be contributing to the overall global food supply. To some extent, like, you know, the global food supply, is, it's not as important about where it goes, it's just important of how much there is out there. Fewer commodities on the market means more competition, which means prices go up. In developed countries like Australia, that can mean slightly more expensive food. And while that definitely can hurt people that are already struggling with a rising cost of living, in developing and vulnerable countries, it can mean large groups of people losing access to food completely. For many developing countries that don't produce enough food, they have to, you know, the, the governments literally have to buy it in, bring it in. And as those prices go up, there would be a certain point where they simply cannot purchase enough to feed their populations. And it's not even just a lack of supply that can affect global prices. Simply the uncertainty around a future lack of supply can be enough to spook the markets and drive prices up. The failure to renew this deal means global markets will be more volatile. This tendency to try to predict the future is actually one of the reasons why we haven't fully felt the effects of the collapse of the deal yet. The markets are pricing in a, a, a future deal. They think, okay, there, something's gonna get worked out here. But, you know, there is a concern always with markets that at some point people are gonna be like, well, actually, this isn't gonna happen. And then we are gonna see prices really increase. So, with so much at stake, why did Russia decide to pull out of this deal? Russia says the West wasn't honouring its side of the bargain, 
and that it's actually the West that's getting in the way of food reaching global markets. They signed the deal with the idea that they would be given relief from sanctions on their agricultural industry, in particular their fertilizer industry. Like Ukraine, Russia is hugely important to global food supply. The EU and US say that their sanctions aren't directly targeting Russia's grain and fertilizer exports. But Russia says restrictions on things like banking and insurance are causing big problems for their agricultural industries. The European Union as well as the Americans have removed uh, uh, the Russian Agricultural Bank from what's called SWIFT. SWIFT is basically a network that major banks use to communicate with each other securely. And when you're not connected to it, it's a lot harder to do business internationally. Russia also says that sanctions affecting insurance have made it a lot harder and more expensive for Russia to insure its exports. Those ships have huge millions of dollars of worth of products on them and you need to insure those in case the ship goes down or something. Despite all of this, Russia still managed to ship record amounts of wheat last season and saw fertilizer export revenues soar. While some of Russia's complaints haven't been fully addressed yet, solutions have been proposed for some of the issues, like the SWIFT banking problem, although these suggestions have been rejected by Russia. Russia says that it wants to see all of its demands met, and that means full sanctions relief and not workarounds. One of the big problems here is that many Western countries have been hesitant to roll back any of the sanctions placed on Russia, not only because it can be a tricky process, but because it's often very unpopular. Many in the West argue that even if you think the lack of sanctions relief towards Russia might seem unfair, what's really unfair is the actual reason why all of this is happening. Well, I think we can step back even further and say, why do we have the this crisis in the first place because Russia invaded a sovereign country. So Russia created this crisis in the first place. To add to this, while Russia has accused the West of not honoring the deal, many in the West have accused Russia of undermining the deal too. This deal, it was not working effectively because of Russian sabotage. Ukraine says Russian authorities have been deliberately dragging their feet throughout the deal, slowing down exports by delaying registration and inspection of ships. There were months there where there were just literally lines of ships waiting. Now, if we look just at January of this year, Russian inspectors would only register two or three new vessels on a day when there would be 80 standing there ready to go. Now, even if you give Russia the benefit of the doubt about honoring its side of the deal and genuinely believe it wants to make sure the developing world has enough food, it's hard to deny just how much Russia has contributed to the destruction of the agricultural industry of one of the world's biggest food producers. The way in which it's impacted the Ukrainian agriculture industry is just, is catastrophic. Russia has been accused by human rights groups, experts, and politicians around the world of not only stealing Ukrainian grain, but deliberately destroying crops, planting mines on farmland so that it can't be used, shelling grain storage facilities, and destroying the ports that are used to transport grain out of Ukraine. Agriculture has been targeted by the Russian military. Ukraine is now the most mined territory on earth. I can't send workers to a field where I know mines and bombs are. It took more than 20 years to build this. It was destroyed in one day. All of this helps to at least partly explain why Western governments aren't all that keen on giving Russia any sanctions relief. So, if the West has so far been unwilling to budge, and President Putin says that Russia won't be rejoining until their demands are met, why are so many key players still optimistic that a deal can be reached? Russia obviously has a lot of motivation to ditch the deal, as it weakens Ukraine's ability to fund and fight the war. But experts say Russia also has plenty of motivation to get the deal back on track. Russia has repeatedly said that it wants to help developing countries avoid a food crisis. And again, even if you don't believe that Russia actually cares about preventing a food crisis in developing countries, experts argue that at the very least, Russia wants to appear as if it does. As Russia's relationship with the West has soured, it's been building ties and becoming more dependent on countries in Africa, the Middle East and Asia, many of which are struggling with food insecurity. The Russians have less of a kind of financial interest and more of, I think, a reputation interest. This is a war of narrative. Putin doesn't want to come across as the bad guy in the eyes of the global south. 
So, what about the Western side of things? Some experts are skeptical that any sanctions relief will happen. But the alternative options aren't great. Trying to transport the grain west is a lot more expensive and filled with a number of logistics issues. Even the so-called next best option, reaching foreign ports via the Danube River, is a big problem. Not only due to the size of the river, but the fact that Russia has been constantly attacking Ukraine's ports here. This is actually why there are many experts that believe that sanctions relief isn't out of the question because of what's at stake here. The idea is that instead of removing sanctions completely, replacing them with smarter, more targeted sanctions may be a way to achieve similar results without hurting vulnerable people in countries around the world. We need to be flexible and figure out how we can continue to sanction the Russians and, and make it very clear that what they've done is a flagrant violation of international law and just wrong, but also at the same time ensure that the economic, the world economy continues to function and the food, food supply is not destabilized. At the end of the day, it's an incredibly complex situation. But one thing that pretty much all experts agree with is that the world needs a healthy and stable global food supply if it wants any chance of fighting back against the growing food insecurity crisis that's impacting hundreds of millions of the world's most vulnerable people.